what does an unmasked narcissist look like? From the time they start the devaluing, you're starting to see bits of what they look like unmasked. When it gets to the point with, in a relationship with a narcissistic person where they no longer feel the need to wear the mask, where they pretty much know you know who they are, this is why it's not such a great idea to let them know that you know who they are if you're going to stay with them. This is why therapy is not a great idea to go to with them. Because once they know that you know how they truly are, and they are, uh, they're, they're seeing that you're staying with them anyway, pretty much in their eyes, because of the entitled, grandiose, you know, self importance that they have, that means that you accept them as they are, right? So understand that you don't really want to unmask them in the sense of letting them know you're unmasking them in or, and if you're going to not be stepping right away from them because they will escalate the toxic behavior towards you because they have no need any longer for the love bombing. Unmasked narcissist and projection. What you'll see is you've seen the darkness on their face, right? That's one thing is you do see the empty blankness of the of who they are right you see the, the the eyes the expressions in their on their face but in their actions you might see escalated projection and the projection in a way like they act um they they may a covert narcissist may do something like um you want to talk about something and they they act like you are you're you're just too judgmental, angry, um, hostile, or anything to talk to, and then they shut down and pl and do a victim withdrawal or a silence. They'll project onto you their own hostilities and judgmental behaviors and judgmental you know, attitudes and whatever onto you. It's instant, it's quick. Like it, it, maybe it used to be when before they knew you were figuring them out, it used to be where there would be some gaslighting going on in there or some some way for them to wiggle out of accountability. There's none of that. It's just straight to, well, you're so rude. You're so this. You're so that. Right. So the blaming and the projection before you can even have a conversation. OK, so there will be sometimes a total withdrawal. They'll just the silent treatment will turn into a withdrawn indifference of just kind of hostility and withdrawn behavior ver and, and lack of engagement in any, in any communication with you. So it goes from the engaged seeking of supply in a negative way from you often into, or sometimes into like a withdrawal. Um, and then if they are, if there are any demand made on them while they're in this withdrawal state, any request, any, even a request to talk or even a request for anything, for anything at all, they will attack and they'll go into a gaslighting or, or a, um, you know, like a smearing kind of attack towards you. Basically vindictive attacks that might bring up the past. They, they're, they're doing, what they're doing when they're unmasked is they're doing everything they can to avoid accountability for being who they are, for the actions that they, that they take, for the way they treat you and for the way they behave. So they're gonna do anything they can to deflect it back at you before you say a word. So they know they're unmasked. They don't really care anymore because they still want the supply. So maybe this will go on for a while, then it'll go back to the love bomb devalue cycle in a little while, and then it'll come back to this. But the vindictive attacks are meant to point the finger at you for things that you did in the past and the reasons that you're hostile and the reasons that you're judgmental, the reasons that you're angry and the reasons that you're shut down. So they're going to project it. And then it's like, a, it's like a vindictive attack that brings the past back and throws it at you. And you can't deny it because you probably did some of those things. You did some of those things in, in response or rather reaction to the gaslighting and to the yelling and to the abuse and to the, you know, hostility that they were throwing at you in the past. However, when it's brought up in isolation, you can't often people start at this point to feel like maybe they were the abuser. All right. It's because the vindictive attacks have some basis of truth, if that makes sense, or half truth. <laughs> they become emotionally indifferent to the outcome of any issue. So basically you catch them cheating and they're like, 
Yep. There's an indifference. They don't care. They don't care anymore. You're not going anywhere. You're still supply. You become a different, you become the doormat supply at that point, but you're still supply. So they're, and they're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. So who cares? Already caught. You already know who I am. You know, there's an indifference to any, any time that they are, uh, like some, some of them will, will have this indifferent attitude, sort of, you maybe are trying to make it better by saying, okay, okay, let's work this out. Let's, let's talk about this. Let's, let's figure out how we can make things better. And there's total indifference from them. They don't, they don't even engage in it anymore. So when they're unmasked, there is an absolute self, they're in absolute self-protection mode and they are in absolute, the mode of totally avoiding all accountability and, and they are oftentimes ready for the discard at this point. If they stay, you, I hear of a lot of people who live with long-term with the unmasked narcissist and they say, you know, they never, at a certain point, they just never seem to come back. At a certain point, they just never seem to do the love bombing anymore. It was just always bad. It was always like living with someone who hated me. The truth is they hate themselves, right? They are, what you're seeing is underneath. You're seeing, it's basically what's always there. It's just, you're able to see it. It's not that they take like here, look at me. Well, sometimes it's more that you see more and more the truth of who they are. And so there's no need for them to, to hide it. Sometimes I'll play the victim in order again to push the accountability onto everybody else so they don't have to face who they are and how they are and the way they treat people, right? So playing the victim is another one. Um, if they plan on staying and they're not in the middle of a discard, they sometimes will begin to reestablish power. So a lot of this, what we, we're talking about is ways of reestablishing power. They need to have power and uh, in every relationship, they need to feel like they are the ones in control of that relationship rather than two people relating be what creates, a, you know, a relationship. No, they're just, it's a control game. They need the attention, even if it's negative, which is supply, right? So, and they can't be alone. So if they don't have new supply on the hook already, they, they, live, they can't be alone. They can't, they can't. They need, they need from other people all the time. So, okay, they, when they're trying to reestablish the power, um, they can sometimes get really frenzied and manic about it. And a lot of word salad, a lot of, um, uh, like if you do talk to them, it'll be explosive word salad, sit down and they'll monologue at you and they'll tell you exactly how it is and all these crazy things that they're, you know, it doesn't make any sense what they're talking about. You ask them one question, they don't answer the question, but instead they ask you 15 questions. Uh, that kind of thing where they're doing anything they can to like insert themselves to gain power. What is underneath all of the fake and all of the lies pretty much is miserable and shut down human beings. There is a miserable person that is avoiding and hiding from themselves, their true self by pretending that they are by believing the delusions that they are so great and amazing, right? So it's not becoming a good person and becoming great and amazing because of the great and amazing deeds you do and thoughts you have and whatever. It is this hiding of like the, the way pe the way we be evolve is by looking at the stuff we need to change, right? It's looking at the stuff in our life that we need to work on in order to become more elevated, better, whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, truer to ourself individuals. A narcissist doesn't do that. They won't look at those things. They push them back and project them forward onto other people so that other people are accountable and never take accountability and never make the changes. So what you si that's what's underneath. That's what's underneath and that's miserable. So don't let empathy take over and, and think that because we know that they're miserable, that that means that there's some sort of um, help that we can give them in order to not be miserable and then make change. It won't work because the, uh, the fundamental problem is the lack of empathy. And the lack of empathy does not allow them to really care whether all of this affects anybody else.